Hi, my name is Jeremy Harris, founder of Reverb Coffee Company. Reverb Coffee Company is a micro coffee roastery focused on bringing exceptional coffee to the city of Memphis. Um, another focus is to try to develop the coffee culture in the city of Memphis. I personally feel like it's lagging behind other cities in similar size. So it's one of my passions to just teach people about coffee and, you know, have a conversation about coffee at any, any possible point and to bring them along for the ride. I've partnered with one of my good friends, Alan Bunn from Lone Wolf Video to you know, discuss these things, feel like he's a smart fellow. So hope you check this out where we talk about important things to us and, you know, hopefully important things in the city. So enjoy. So, welcome to Espressos with Entrepreneurs. My name is Jeremy Harris, as you just saw, and this is my friend, Alan Bunn of Lone Wolf Video. Um, before we get started, you may actually not know what an entrepreneur is. I'm, it's kind of a fancy word. I never know how to spell it. When I type it into Google, I always get the E and the U mixed up. So I'm gonna turn it over to Alan, and he'll give his little input as to what he thinks an entrepreneur is, and then I'll answer, and we'll move on from there. Yeah, I mean, I kind of have the same thought. What is an entrepreneur? Um, I think it's something that kind of is constantly evolving because new technologies and services and whatnot are always being thought up. So entrepreneurs back in the you know, day may have been someone who did something that now seems really basic, but then seems so cutting edge. And uh, now those are kind of the people I think of when I think of an entrepreneur. Um, I would hope that we both qualify just because we're, you know, small business owners who are kind of striking out on our own and doing something that um, we don't kind of go to an office for a nine to five job and collect a, a salary. It's a little more vague. And when someone asks me, what do I do for a living? I kind of like think, well, uh, you know, I like to make videos, I guess, but um, maybe to make ourselves feel better that we're entrepreneurs, that we have a title <laughs> and that we can actually, uh, you know, I don't know, have a more yeah. official title, I guess. It's just a nice, yeah. something that we can all fall under. Even though I make videos and you make coffee, we can both say we're entrepreneurs. Yeah. It's a common banner to unite under. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't, didn't even have any forethought, but that is, you know, it is a common moniker that we give to ourselves. And uh, to me, an entrepreneur is just someone who is, uh, who is creative yet unrelenting at the same time. Uh, sees uh, either a market gap or sees the necessity for the status quo to be changed and they set out on an adventure to do that you know however they feel necessary you know you felt like you know maybe there's a market for really high quality video editing at a very reasonable cost because it's either one or the other you know you pay an arm and a leg or you don't get very good quality me I set out because I saw that there was a gap in the industry in Memphis for specialty coffee but also a gap in the culture like i said in the intro that you know cities similar in size to memphis already have multiple cafes multiple roasters of my quality in the city so you know as an entrepreneur i'm creative and trying to think of ways as to how to educate people but also grow my brand because Education costs money and if I don't make money, I can't spend it on education or marketing or anything like that. So um, that to me is what an entrepreneur is. And um, I think where we wanted to go from there is to then kind of talk about why we started Espressos with Entrepreneurs. You know, you already have so much time devoted to your business. Why do you want to take on another project? So um, I'll let you answer that first i would say first off because it's cheap um <laughs> like i said we don't have a ton of money uh you know we're both blessed enough to have some means to be working with but yeah. you have to be wise with what you have and uh, as a marketing major you know in college uh i like marketing to some extent um but it is time consuming and there's a lot of you know channels that i can see down the line as you know 
as my business grows that I would want to utilize the more traditional channels that you know a lot of people see and cost a lot of money though because of that and right now we have especially with social media and YouTube and the like um, so many things that although they are time consuming I mean we are spending all the money on this time to do it um, there is a much greater potential for um, return on very little investment um, because as entrepreneurs who have small businesses and don't have to be at a certain office at a certain time time is something we have a lot of and uh, that's one thing we'll talk about is how hard it is to utilize the time that we do have yeah. in a productive manner yeah. and um, so this just seems one way where maybe we can have a little bit of a voice and give a voice to some other folks you know if it gets to that point yeah. and um, just talk about what's going on uh, what struggles we have what successes we have as small business owners on the very cusp of just starting I mean yeah. know, we're both very new to the small business world less than a year for both of us yeah so um, yeah I would say the biggest thing is money this is yeah. this is just a very um, cheapest to bad word affordable <laughs> thing that we can do and put together and maybe reach some folks and let them know about our you know businesses what yeah. we do yeah that's the same reason you know yeah. I don't I have zero dollars in my marketing budget solely for the fact that I don't you know <laughs> have any money to spend in many other places too so the marketing budget is you know it's a tertiary well that may be putting marketing way too down on the totem pole but there are well, other... I just meant a big word oh <laughs> you pull out a dollar and give it to me for yeah. that word but no it's it's a, not a necessity but it is something that I would like to address but you know this is this is a way to get our business out and talk about what we do and talk about the city. I love the city. I've been here my whole life. Mm -hmm. So it's a way to talk about the city that we both live in. And we both started the company to our companies to maybe one day invest back into the cities, yeah. either financially or with our services or with our time again. Mm -hmm. um, so this podcast is a way for us to promote what we believe and what we think is important issues and you know maybe have a little fun along the way yeah so that's in short why i'm here too yep uh moment of honesty we are not having espressos with entrepreneurs today we're having french press with entrepreneurs but in order to keep the what is it uh <coughs> alliteration going yeah <laughs> It's catchy. It's a good marketing scheme, alliteration. So, yeah, we went with that because it's catchy. No one else was using it yet, so we yeah. jumped on it. So today's episode could be French press with fancy people. Yeah. Although neither of us are fancy people and keeps up with the alliteration. Yeah. French press with familiar faces, maybe down the line, but right now not so much because we're new to this. Yeah. We'll have French press in about 15 episodes. So we yeah. can use it then. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that sums up espressos with entrepreneurs in a nutshell. Um, I guess I'll introduce myself a little bit further. Um, my name is Alan Bunn, um, owner of Lone Wolf Video. And um, I've just been friends with Jeremy for a long time since we were wee lads back in uh, elementary school. And so anyway, to get into the history of that, maybe that could be an episode down the line. Um, but... Yeah, I just, I started Lone Wolf. Uh, I like video. I, in college, I was a business major. So that's where the money was at. The scholarships were in the <laughs> business department. And it, it was a true. good, it was a good program. I had good classes, good teachers. Um, but took a few classes out of college that I just wasn't crazy about and had an opportunity to just kind of strike out my own, do something different. Um, had some good connections. And um, I just, I don't know, video is cool. It's neat to, as someone that's not great with their hands, you know, I've never been a, a mechanic or a, a craftsman. Um, video is kind of my chance to do that. I can yeah. put together, you know, raw footage and uh, you know, good soundtrack and make something that you know can move people to action. Um, and so that's cool. And so I just I saw that there was an opportunity to make um, affordable videos that you know didn't break the budget um, yeah. of smaller businesses and but still present kind of a quality product that held up to you know the more expensive stuff. Um, I don't have all the bells and whistles of one of the larger uh, production companies because I am one guy and I only have so much money mm -hmm. but um, you know I think that the production quality can grow as time goes on I'll invest money that I make back in the business and so anyway getting off onto that that's why I'm here I like video and 
riding your coattails to glory. <laughs> Reverb's got all this press, and uh, it's not as easy for a video guy to get press. That's true. That's so, a good point. So yeah, that's why I'm here. Nice. I think you touched on it earlier. Uh, to spend your time, spending your time wisely, and maybe we'll kind of wrap up with that thought, so we don't waste all of your time. Um, spending time wisely, I think. As an entrepreneur with no boss and 100% autonomy in your company, it's hard to, for me, and I know you probably express the same sentiments and probably 99% of other entrepreneurs would share this sentiment that it's hard to be self-motivated on most days, especially on days where the previous day something bad has either happened to you or to the business and it's just like, I don't feel like getting out of bed. and usually 10 o'clock rolls around and I'm still not out of bed because it's just one of those days. But, uh, you know, self-motivation and uh, just really scheduling your time wisely and making sure meetings are worth your time. At this point in my business, every single meeting is worth that time because you just never really know what's going to come out of it. So if I'll, I'll leave with one thought is to, you know, if you're starting your own business or even if you're in in a big corporate job and you're just starting, I'd say my piece of advice is to go into every meeting with an open hand and no real precedent for the meeting because if you have expectations and precedents for the meeting, then you're probably not going to meet either and you're just going to be upset, but mm -hmm. um, analogize it to go in to watch a movie. I went and saw Battleship a couple years in theaters. Sorry. Horrible, Sorry. horrible movie according to Rotten Tomatoes. I went into the movie just wanting to sit in air conditioning for two hours. And if I was entertained, so be it. I thoroughly enjoyed my time. Maybe I didn't enjoy the movie, but I enjoyed my time because I had no expectations for the movie. Maybe that'll help you out in your next meeting. Probably not, but it helps me. <laughs> if it's an especially awful meeting, maybe you'll enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I would say the same thing. I think for me, I know we are early on in the process, but uh, it's the really basic things that are the hardest things. Mm -hmm. uh, the motivation is huge because I know I started out, man, I was Mr. Marketing and I wanted to get into it and have the logo design and the business cards made and the website up and ready and all that social media going. Um, but it's hard to stay on that, especially when you're not necess necessarily seeing immediate results yeah. because um, it is really kind of just a numbers game. You know, you have to put as much time as you can into it to get, you know, really to reap the benefits out. Um, so stuff like social media, where although maybe I don't have a ton of followers right now, um, you know, it still can help my um, how it's called the, search. Yeah, the search engine optimization. So things like that, you know, where I have plenty of time, I need to be spending doing that, and I I don't honestly. I have days that yeah, I don't want to get up or I want to. You know, binge watch the latest show on Netflix or whatever, and I have the time to do that. But that's not what I should be doing. Yeah. So um, I think it's one of those things where accountability is nice. I mean, if you have another friend that has these kind of aspirations of being an entrepreneur to kind of take advantage of it, hey, what are you up to? Because I think for me sometimes it's easier for me to ask you what you're up to and get more excited about reverb than about Lone Wolf Video when I kind of get bogged down in things. And like you said, when there's you know not as much activity going on and each thing has a larger kind of impact on your business, uh, if something goes south, then, you know, it really sucks and everything's yeah. a lot harder. So it's kind of keeping the big picture in mind and that, you know, right now this thing might not be ideal, but, you know, pull through it, get the most out. Even if it's a failure, get what you can out of that because failures are going to happen and move on and apply what you've learned to the next thing. I think it's as easy as that. I think it's just kind of learning from the bad stuff. Yeah. We both enjoy movies and watching television mm -hmm. shows. So maybe we'll, we'll end the episode with what we think is worth your time since we just talked about time. So yeah, give them something that the folks should, should watch this week that's worth their time. Okay, this week, what's worth your time? Well, I would say TV-wise, I'm going to give it a TV show and a movie. Oof, you might outdo me here. So TV show, I'm going to steal your thunder because I'm sure you'd probably recommend this one if you really thought about it. If you haven't seen it yet, and if you have, you know, good for you. Rewatch it again. Breaking Bad. I oh, mean, okay. You didn't steal mine. Oh, well, you can't top Breaking Bad. So <laughs> no, I, I beat can't. Jeremy in TV category, regardless. <laughs> um, if you can watch that, if you have Netflix and you haven't seen it, 
watch Breaking Bad because it'll blow your mind. And that'll take a lot of your time. Yeah, it'll take a little while. But I mean, you know, it's 13 episode it. seasons and it's like five seasons. So it's it's not too bad. But yeah, you'll get hooked in there. So you'll lose a couple days on it probably. <laughs> yeah, sorry. But yeah, so that, so you give your TV show and then we... I mean, House of Cards. Oh, yeah. Obviously. Right now. Mm -hmm. Crazy. And hey, that's a good example of entrepreneurialism. That's not a real word, but you understand what I'm getting at. Netflix has no creative overlords to tell them what to do. So they can, you know, take every, Kevin Spacey can take every creative liberty he wants. And they're creating probably one of the best shows that's ever been in existence. And I'm not being overly dramatic about that. Like all the critics and all the people that are watching would say that. And that's, I think that's cool to look in the market and say, okay, these people have complete creative freedom and look at what they're putting out. So it's worth your time. You know, if you like politics, you'll definitely like it a lot more. If not, you might yeah, not. But. I think you'll still like it because it doesn't really put politicians in the greatest light. Right. So I don't like politics, but like yeah. I like House of Cards. Yeah. I mean, maybe interested in politics or know yeah. something about politics. Yeah. If not, I think they kind of yeah. they'll pull you in. Yeah. It's good. And that's only two seasons, so not as much time so far. Well, yeah, but you'll have to wait at least a year for the third season. <sighs> Don't so remind me. This has been a little bit of a plug for Netflix so far. I guess that's <laughs> probably, I mean, we both use it though, so that yeah. would probably be something we'd call back to. Yeah, I concur. House of Cards is an excellent show. It's mm -hmm. so a movie. I love movies so much, uh, hence video. And so it's hard to just pick one. Um, I'll say that in the last week I've seen like three movies mm -hmm. uh, and all very recent and all nominated for awards. I saw um, Inside Lewin Davis, the Coen Brothers movie. I saw Dallas Buyers Club and I saw um, American Hustle. And I would say of those three, if you had to watch one of those three movies and you could only watch one, um, well, I guess it depends on if you like really feel good <laughs> movies. If you like feel good movies, none of them are great. I guess American Hustle. But if you want to watch like probably the best movie of the three, in my opinion, which that's all that matters right now. Yes. Um, I would say Inside Lewin Davis was the most interesting one. I, I didn't get what American Hustle was all about, all the you know hubbub. Um, it has some good actors, but I, I it was too long and kind of boring. Mm -hmm. And Dallas Buyers Club, you know, it was it was good. Conaghy gave a great performance, but it was I don't know, uh, not the happiest movie. And I guess I don't know. It was informing, so that was good. But Lewin Davis had some great music, and I love music too. Not that I can play it, but I love to listen to it. <laughs> and uh, I think because of that, I don't know, and it just looked cool. And I like video, so it, you know that's important to me. Mm -hmm. So I'd say Inside Lewin Davis is a, is a cool recent movie that's probably worth at least checking out. If nothing else, listen to the soundtrack, because it's really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't watch as much movies. The last movie I saw that was good was Captain Phillips, so no, go see that. It's worth your time. May not be, may not blow your socks off, but it's a good story. It's a really good story to. I saw Catching Fire too. That one is a good one. Okay. You should see that. Regard. Well, you should see Hunger Games first and then Catching <laughs> Fire. But it, that was good. I forgot all about that one. And that was like, you know, tons of money. Everybody likes that one for the most part. But yeah. Cool. Well, do you have anything it, else? I just say if you have any, um, I don't know, topics that you're interested in, uh, if you're in, the Memphis area, or maybe even outside of it, if you for some reason see this and interested in talking to us, uh, feel free to leave comments below or tell us you want to talk to us. We can figure something out. We can Skype or whatever. And um, yeah, just tell us what you want to hear about. Help us help you. Yeah. Well, I think that wraps up our time with uh, Espressos with Entrepreneurs. Don't take yourself too seriously.